Welcome to the Basic Principles of Infection Control for Environmental Services Technicians. You will learn about the basic principles of infection control and how they are important to environmental services in the hospital setting. You will go over basic principles of cleaning and disinfection and responsibilities of environmental services. Your work is very important to controlling the spread of germs and preventing infections. EVS technicians come into contact with every patient on a daily basis, and what you do becomes a part of the patient's experience. EVS technicians are key players on the infection control team. Through proper disinfection of surfaces and other safety measures, you save lives by helping to prevent infections. Your work of cleaning and disinfecting rooms and items is very important for the safety of patients, visitors, and staff. The clean environment and hospitality you provide are a big part of patient safety and their overall experience in the hospital. Infection means that a germ has entered a person and the person shows signs of being sick. The infection can show itself as swelling around a wound, as diarrhea and vomiting, or as a cold or pneumonia. Other signs of infection can be fever, pus, pain, cough, or trouble breathing. There are different types of germs, microorganisms, that cause infections, bacteria, viruses, and molds fungi. Viruses are so small, they cannot be seen with a regular microscope, and antibiotics don't work on infections caused by viruses. One example of a virus that we are all familiar with is influenza, also known as the flu. Bacteria come in different shapes, and they can be seen with a microscope. Bacteria can be killed with antibiotics, but it can be difficult to find the correct antibiotic. An example of one type of bacteria is Clostridium difficile, or C. diff. C. diff infections may cause the patient to have stomach pain and diarrhea. A fungus usually attacks weak patients, or the really young, or the really old. There are no antibiotics to help with fungal infections. C. diff is known as a spore-forming bacteria. This type of bacteria has a type of shell around it that makes it hard to kill. It is spread very easily in hospitals, especially from areas around the patient with C. diff. Looking at this chart, we can see how long different germs can survive in the hospital environment. C. diff can last in the environment for five months, and MRSA, which we are all familiar with, can last from seven days to seven months. This shows how important it is to clean and disinfect correctly. It can be hard to kill germs and get rid of them completely. What causes an infection? The first thing to remember is that infections occur in a chain or cycle that can keep repeating. It is important to break this chain to control and prevent infection. What makes up this chain of infection? Hospitals are the perfect place for infection to occur. Patients carry germs and can pass them along. But patients also have weak bodies that germs can more easily attack. Germs can live in many places. They come into contact with different pieces of equipment, hands of staff, and the environment. Germs find a way to travel. They find a way to enter the body of a weak person, a patient, and they cause an infection. Think of the germ as a burglar. The burglar enters your house, or the entry to the body. This is the reservoir. They find you sleeping, in a weakened state, and they steal your belongings or your health. Your symptoms are the broken window or door, your loss of belongings, and the stress you feel. So what can we do to fight infections? EVS technicians act like the police and stop the burglars before they enter the house. Your work helps to break the chain of infection by stopping germs from moving around and finding new homes. Washing your hands or using hand sanitizers and reminding others to do so is essential. Some other steps to take. Follow isolation signs and wear the right PPE. Using gloves, 
Gowns and masks the right way is important, not only to stop the spread of infection, but also to protect you. Remember that germs can live on surfaces for a long time. Correctly clean and disinfect the surfaces, especially the high-touch surfaces, to prevent the germs from spreading. In order to kill the germs, the surfaces need to stay wet for the right amount of time. This is known as the contact or the dwell time. And don't forget, by staying healthy and getting your immunizations, like the flu shot, you help to prevent spreading the germs to patients and others. You are an important part of the healthcare team. You can help prevent infections. Cleaning and disinfecting are very important parts of your work. There is a right way of cleaning and disinfecting. Always first perform hand hygiene. Wash your hands or use hand sanitizer. Clean and disinfect from top to bottom. Start with cleaner surfaces and move to dirty ones, like the bathroom. Use the chemicals the way they are supposed to be used, without mixing or taking shortcuts. The average label claim for contact time is 5 to 10 minutes. Typical air drying time is 1.5 to 2 minutes. So the product and the cloth may need to be reapplied up to 5 to 6 times. Hand hygiene protects the patient, you and all of us. Hand hygiene is the use of alcohol hand sanitizer, either gel or foam, or washing with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. Hand hygiene must be performed before and after cleaning a room, after cleaning the bathroom, after removing gloves, and after contact with the patient environment. Hand hygiene must also be done after using the bathroom, before and after eating, and before going home. What does it mean to take standard precautions? It means treating everything in the patient environment as if germs are everywhere, because they are. Gloves should be worn the entire time cleaning the room and must be discarded before making the bed and stocking the room. Hand hygiene must be performed when gloves are removed. Gowns and eye protection should be used if there is a risk of splashing, and masks must be worn if there is a risk of splashing in the nose or mouth. What are isolation precautions? Isolation precautions protect you from germs in the room being cleaned. Isolation precautions are used at the same time as standard precautions. Isolation precautions include safety from germs through contact, droplets, or airborne. For example, if the patient was on contact precautions and you may get splashed in the face, you would wear a gown, gloves, goggles, and a mask. Use standard precautions, follow the isolation signs, perform hand hygiene, and you will be protected. Remember to talk with the clinical staff or your supervisor if you are worried or have questions. For properly cleaning and disinfecting discharge patient rooms, you must take steps in a certain order. Steps are taken in a certain order to separate clean and dirty. For example, cleaning and disinfecting the patient room takes place before cleaning and disinfecting the bathroom. This is because going from cleaner to dirtier surfaces helps to prevent the spread of germs. All surfaces around the patient, such as the bed and the nightstand, are disinfected after discharge. These steps are the minimum of what must be done for every patient room. While every facility works differently, these steps should always be followed. There are steps for cleaning an occupied patient room. Remember, there is no high dusting because you cannot dust over the patient or when you aren't cleaning the whole room. We are also only cleaning and disinfecting high-touch surfaces. Cleaning the occupied patient room clean also follow certain steps in order, just as you do for a discharge clean. There are no shortcuts when it comes to patient safety. You can stop the germs from moving by using chemicals properly. Clean and disinfect thoroughly and without rushing. Do not mix chemicals. Use chemicals for the length of time as required. Proper dwell time. Make sure you are using a sporicidal disinfectant for C. diff rooms. If this is confusing, 
please speak with your supervisor. What can you do to stop the germs from moving? We discuss the proper steps for cleaning and disinfecting patient discharge and occupied rooms. Follow the proper steps and protocols. Make sure the chemicals are properly mixed. Use the automatic dispensers, if available, or measure properly if they aren't. Do not dilute chemicals that are already at the proper ratio. Watch the clock when disinfecting to make sure you have the proper contact or dwell time. What else can you do to help stop the germs from moving? Do not re-dip mops. Change the mop head after every use. Know the high-touch surfaces. Studies have shown that disinfecting the high-touch surfaces every day can prevent infections. There is more you can do to help stop the germs from moving. Whether it is EVS or the clinical staff using the equipment, make sure it is disinfected between every patient. Don't wear gloves in the hall or out of the rooms unless working at your cart. Perform hand hygiene after removing gloves. EVS and infection prevention work together as partners to prevent infections. One way they partner is to evaluate cleanliness. This is to make sure EVS is doing a good job to provide a safe environment for our patients. The evaluations are done in the following ways. Using direct observation, UV markers, or an ATP system. In direct observation, a manager, a peer, or a supervisor will either watch you clean to make sure you are following the proper steps or will check the cleaning randomly. The UV marker system uses an ultraviolet gel and a black light to see if the area was cleaned and disinfected properly. In ATP testing, an item is swabbed to look for dirty matter on surfaces. Evaluating cleanliness is not done to punish EVS technicians. It is done to show you you are doing a good job to help preventing infections. It takes a team to keep things clean. EVS technicians are an important part of the team, and we make a difference. Through proper cleaning and disinfection, and the relationships we build with our patients and staff, we can make a difference. We can help to stop germs from moving around and causing infections.